Now, one of the Republican congressmen who voted against protecting same-sex marriage attended his gay son's wedding three days later. The Respect for Marriage Act passed the House last Tuesday, but 157 Republicans voted no on that bipartisan bill. Pennsylvania Congressman Glenn Thompson was one of them. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And Republican hypocrisy? Why don't we just merge those two words together? Because I can't recall any situation where those terms are ever exclusive of one another. Republicans surely are hypocrites, and chances are 99 out of 100 hypocrites are also Republican. Only three days before the wedding, Thompson voted against the bill to protect same-sex marriage. Thompson was one of 157 House Republicans who voted to oppose the legislation, which would codify same-sex marriages and interracial marriages into law. That bill now needs at least 10 Senate GOP votes to pass the Senate. And here's the deal. Republicans simply have to be hypocrites. When your party's policies literally only support the top 1% financial elite, then you've got to be running constant cons to conjure up enough support. And so Republicans will always say things they do not mean at all. They will always claim to support ideas they couldn't care less about. And most of the things they claim support of do not even affect them in their day to day lives. He voted no. He said, no, nope, not going to defend gay marriage. His press secretary argued it was nothing more than an election year messaging stunt. But after his gay son's wedding in a statement, his spokeswoman said Thompson and his wife were thrilled to attend and celebrate their son's marriage on Friday night as he began this new chapter in his life, adding they are very happy to welcome their new son-in-law into the family. A moron House Republican from Pennsylvania just gave us a great case in point. This Jacqueline voted against the defense of same-sex marriage. His opponents called him out immediately for doing so as nothing more than a campaign posture. And of course, this lying Republican, again, are there any other kind, dug in deep. They all want to paint themselves as some staunch religious beacon of righteousness and family values. Yeah, whatever. Well, tune all that out and never listen to these shams ever again. Because guess what? This same congressman who voted against same-sex marriage attended his own gay son's wedding and couldn't be happier to welcome his new son-in-law to the family. Well, let me tell you, Congressman Thompson's son and the new son-in-law are the two most forgiving, gracious, nicest gays I've ever met. Because if uh, my father had voted against protecting and safeguarding the sanctity of my marriage uh, three days before my wedding, if I, I think if I had been his son, Congressman Scott would have been sitting outside. And that's very good. If that's truly the case, then maybe you should vote to keep that sort of thing legal and not call your son a criminal. Maybe you shouldn't advocate to break up their marriage and nullify it. Perhaps it would be a good way to show your happiness, gratitude, and welcome. But I guess that family has come to an acceptance. Dad has to lie, manipulate, and con because it's part of his job. He's a Republican. What do you expect? Wake up, folks. The solution is find another career, a career where you can be honest because you don't deserve a seat in Congress when you are a two-timing, blatant, lying snake like this Jacqueline. And the saddest thing is this guy is going to get away with it. He'll probably get reelected perpetually. His district is probably so gerrymandered he never has to worry about his career as a politician at all because he hires an entire squadron of people who will cover up, spin, and apologize for him, dirty his opponent, and make sure he keeps his useless job. You think a Republican lawmaker hires experts in American government, law, logic, or economics? Think twice. They spend every last nickel on the great philosophical question, how do I con the people to get my useless butt elected to do absolutely nothing for another two years? That's Republican politics, and all his little buddies in Republican Congress will flock to his defense. Hypocrisy is a Republican birthright, and they will make sure the base stays enamored with their political heroes no matter how crooked they truly are. This has got to change. A story like this should mark the end of a political career for a hypocrite like this. There are so many qualified people who could have that seat. Young people, ambitious people, honest and decent people, people who are focused on their service, not on protecting their job and re-election at all costs. Those folks are out there, and we've got to remove the warts in office like this guy to pave the way for them. And the way this happens is for all of us to start paying attention. How many of us even watch these votes at all? How many of us know our own representative has voted, and do you hold them accountable?
The truth is, that's way too rare. Republican lawmakers want their constituents to call school boards and complain about critical race theory that isn't even happening, so you'll look the other way when they vote down veterans' rights like they just did the other day. Yeah, these people have no business in office, and that's obvious once we start actually checking on their business. And that's the fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.